Let's now talk about sublayers. Sublayers are a way for an entire department to add their contribution to a sequence. As an example, let's create a sublayer and we'll go down here to the file and under library layout, we have the full scene. So this could exist as, let's say, the layout department, as an example. And after the layouts, we might add in another department. So we might have something like the animation department. We might have, let's say, after that, the effects department, and then perhaps last but not least, the lighting. And so, again, the idea with USD is that you can write out any kind of information you want to these USD files, and then you, you just take every single department, you layer on their contributions one by one, and you end up with the full scene. Also, if you go here to the Scene Graph Layers panel, that's right here, you can see that here are all the different layers that we have in our scene. And this is one of the main differences with sublayers as opposed to, let's just say, referencing something in. Again, with a reference, you want to use this whenever you're trying to bring in individual props or really whenever you're working within one of these departments. That's when you use the reference or the stage manager. But now we're talking about higher level stuff, we have everything put together. There's another note here that's really good to know about, and that is a layer break. What this will do is, let's say that you want to make some overrides to this, so let's say that we create a prune, and for whatever reason, we want to get rid of all the lights in this scene. Well, I'm looking down here at the scene graph tree, we have lights, layout, and then that's where our lights live. So we can just specify this path. We can say lights, forward slash layout, forward slash star. And now, as you can see, we've gotten rid of all the lights. Now, if you want to save this out to a USD file, so let's say we did a USD ROP, and we want to save this out or render it or what have you. This layer break that I just made is saying don't save out any information above it. So, all that stuff, don't save that out when this goes to render out the USD file. If we didn't have this layer break and we wanted to just save out this prune as an example, I guess just this bit of USD information that's just the prune, right? If we go to save that out, we don't want to save out duplicates of the entire scene. We just want to save out the information that's related to what we pruned out and that'll keep our USD file much smaller. That is why we have layer breaks. Because otherwise, let's say you get everything put together, if you want to make an override, at some point, if you saved out all of this information every single time, then your USD files would get huge and you'd be saving out the entire scene multiple times. And you really don't want that. So again, that's why we have the layer break. It's really important if you're in a pipeline uh, to keep that in mind. And uh, usually I'd say that if you're at this level, that is putting everything together for final render across the departments, then just have a layer break right here automatically so you don't have to think about it. And, um, and then any overrides you want happen underneath that layer break and you should be good to go. Also, you might be wondering what the difference is between this activation, that's this yellow power sign, and visibility, which is the blue eye icon. That is the difference between make invisible and deactivate. And uh, pretty much there is no difference. <laughs> when you go to render this, you can use either the eyes or the power you know, icon deactivation to deactivate something in your scene. So from my understanding, there is no difference. Now once you have the basic setup for the sequence with all the departments layered in, then you can go on and make your individual shots. So for shot one, let's frame this in. 
Suppose we have a camera here, so I'll just control click the camera up at the shelf. Let's name this shot001 underscore cam. Under the prim path, we'll say forward slash scene, forward slash cameras, forward slash dollar OS. Now, as you can see, we have scene, cameras, shot001 cam. Now, you can add anything you want at this point. Maybe for some reason, shot one has a different HDR. You can create, let's say, oh, I don't know, a dome light, right? Add a different HDR in. Maybe we can find something here. You can do anything you want. And the main thing is that for whatever you need in shot one, you have all the ingredients here to pick from. And now you just capture everything you need within this box. So that basically goes over there. At this point, you can get as complicated as you want. So maybe you want to bring something over from shot one. You just bring it over to shot two. Shot two lives in its own box over here. And you basically build up your scenes by doing all that. Now, once you have shots put together, let's say that these are the three shots. And really the only override, the difference I have here is just different cameras, right? Bring this into a switch, and now all you do is you just change whatever input you want, and this will be the shot name. And actually, you could, I believe, say something like this, and then append a null. So like, let's say that this is shot one. We could say shot, no, let's go try that again. Shot one, and this could be shot two shot three and now on the switch we can just pick shot one two and three like so finally if this is ready to now render you would do a merge you want to bypass this layer break or at least go around it so that you have all this original information coming in and so you could uh, just bring that in like so, hold down Alt, that'll make this little dot, bring it over here. And then once you have everything you need for rendering, then all you do is you just bring that over like so, and you are ready to render out however you'd like. So you can render this out to uh, USD or you know any sort of render delegate at that point. And just to show you that everything does in fact work, let's say that I have an edit and I just move this barrel over like that. If we go to our switch, let's change this to shot one. Here at the merge, we're good to go. If now we change this to something else, as you can see, we've now changed the override. And that's that.